Is the quality of your work improving? Are your designs evolving? We're going to go into why both of these should be an ongoing process and why they are important. Follow us after the break. Welcome back. I'm Sigurd, and today we're going to be talking evolution of design. The piece I've chosen to talk about this with is a piece that's near and dear to my heart, the Milanese Mitten Gauntlets. Why? Well, the first pair that we're going to be talking about is the first piece of armor that I completed that was not male. Now, I don't recommend diving straight into doing gauntlets or helmets for that matter. Both of these are extremely complicated and, well, they're made for your head and your hands, both of which you shouldn't compromise on. Don't cheap out on this type of armor. Learn on simpler pieces, and as your skills and techniques grow, then you can move into the more complicated pieces that you really need to have the protection for. Now, to a degree, I cheated. One of the locals went back to Milwaukee for some holidays and got patterns from Valerius for the mitten gauntlets and go to plates. He also had a pair of Valerius's early mitten gauntlets, so I had something to look at and I had patterns to work off of. So made it a lot easier to start with. I made these in the winter of 1986, and I continued to use them for a few years. It'd still be good to use today. They're still safe. The problem is they weigh a fair bit. They're made at a 16 gauge mild, and they come in at a hefty 1,019 grams each. Off to a good start, right? Well, yeah, but let's take a closer look and see what uh, how they look. This is the first generation gauntlet. Of all the patterns I got from Valerius, the cuff was missing. The one I created was a bit uh, too tubular and locked the wrist motion out when being used. The back of hand plate, the section between the thumb and fingers was uh, not well shaped and there was no flare there to help bring it in and get it closer to engaging with the weapon when hit. The articulation plates were a bit uh, too bulky and um, poorly refined. The Some planishing was done, but not enough. The transitions from the, the different shapings were uh, uneven and, again, not re very refined. We'll see that that improves in later generations. Um, the tip plate, you can see where the original dishing just abruptly ends into the, the untouched front part. doesn't transition very well. The thumb plate is shallow, poorly shaped, and there's really no three-dimensionally shaping at the articulation points, uh, although they are mostly functional. On the other gauntlet, you can see the palm strap, which is like the originals, and the fingertip strap that is common on originals. Uh, while it's common, it's not the most comfortable. Uh, as you'll see in later generations, that was one of the first things that we changed to accommodate a better de design for comfort. The following year, it was arranged for me to go to Milwaukee to learn from Valerius, a master in armoring, a knight, and a count. On that trip, I got to discuss with him the subtleties of the shape of the midden gauntlet pattern. I was also able to take a pair along with me that I was working on for a customer. This is one of the 16 pairs that was cut out of the 1050.050 nominal 18 gauge spring steel that we chose to work in. The Advantage of this, even though non-heat treated and would still mangle to a degree, allowed us to reduce quite a bit of weight. So these come in at 700 grams each versus the 1,019 grams of the 16 gauge mild. 
The second pair we're going to talk about today was completed in 1990. It is the third pair in the series of 16. This is the first pair to incorporate tip plates to replace the fingertip straps. This was a pretty large leap, but I wanted to be the first one to test drive these to make sure that there was no flaws and to be able to work out a better design for the future versions for the customers. When we first started heat treating, this was high on my list to rebuild this pair and to have them heat treated. As you can see, they haven't been completely put back together and put into use again. I'm working on that. The gloves in the original version were still hanging free, which was a cause of difficulty when trying to put the gauntlets on. So when these get rebuilt, they'll be using the new attachment method of riveting and gluing the gloves into place so that all you have to grab is the cuff to put the gloves on. Let's take a closer look at these and go over the changes from the first design to this design. This is the second generation gauntlets. As you can see at the beginning here, we've got the cuff design has been changed a little bit, a little bit broader, a little bit more uh, cone shaped. It allows for better wrist movement, but still not optimal. The edge has been folded. Again, this was done because my rolls weren't uh, very good looking at the time. And the fold is a easier method to get a cleaner looking a finished product and so I chose to go that way while reinforcing the edge when it's getting hit. So that was done. When we move on to the back of the hand, the area between the thumb and fingers still not shaped as much as it probably should be, but we've started the flare. Again, the flare is not as big as it should be, uh, but it helps and it's a little, little more towards the weapon. Again, you'll see in later generations where that just becomes bigger and bigger as we look more at the originals. The articulation plates, here you can see that they are uh, more cleanly shaped, uh, smoothed out. There's transitioning into the, the plate itself, making for a more aesthetically pleasing and um, even transition from one curve to another. The Articulation is pretty much the same as the first generation. We're also moving into the uh, thumb. The thumb here you can see is a little more shaped. It's a little deeper around the thumb. It's got a little better movement to it. The tip plate has been replaced with the finger straps and instead has individual finger strips of leather that attached to the, the glove itself, which allows for a more comfortable moving of the, the plate, but it was uh, not as well thought out as later generations. The You can see the finish here is uh, on the left gauntlet is that of the straight from the heat treat. Uh, again, this pair was uh, used for many years and then taken back apart when the third generation was being worked on and uh, reshaped and, and heat treated. So this pair hasn't really gotten back into activity yet. The third pair we'll be looking at, when we moved back from Georgia, we found a box that contained parts for two of the pairs from the 16. They were cut out and roughly shaped back in 87 and left sitting there. One of the students decided that it, he would like to learn how to, to do the gauntlets, so we started both pairs. We jointly did this third pair, and he took the other pair home to work on at his leisure. While working on the third pair, we decided to go back to the new shop philosophy of going back to the originals and really taking a look at where the originals are and were we meeting the design guidelines. So, unfortunately, we're limited a little bit to the fact that we had existing parts to work with. So while we were digging into working on this, we were taking notes as comparing to the originals and drafting new patterns for a fourth generation of 
gauntlet. That would be a first major redesign of the patterns themselves. During this time, we got lucky that a friend was on a trip to Glasgow, Scotland, and managed to get in and see the Avant harness up close and personal while it was being cleaned. So we got a number of photos that you wouldn't normally get, and we were able to get multiple angles of the gauntlets to use as review. The main pattern is predominantly derived off the Avant harness in Glasgow and the Friedrich harness in Vienna. So while we were creating this pair of gauntlets and redesigning for future, one of the major changes that we made over the time, the tip plates originally were riveted into the <clears throat> very tip of the glove, and this pulled a bit when you were trying to close your hand around a weapon. Over time, we come up with some ideas that we wanted to test out in this version. So we stitched the whole first digit uh, of the tip plate down to the glove, which allowed for a pull across the hole up to the first knuckle. Um, this has proved to be a, a much smoother design and allows for an easier pull and uh, motion of the gauntlet. We will be continuing to use this design in the future. We also attach the, this is the first generation where we attach the glove permanently to the metal with um, rivets and uh, uh, glue. So um, it's much easier to get in and out of than the previous versions where you had to struggle to hold the glove while you were trying to get your hand into the gauntlet. Here's the details of the third generation. Again, still not happy with the cuff. We've changed the angle of the cone so that uh, we're working on more wrist motion. We've reduced the uh, section of the cuff that is closest to the palm to uh, make that smaller, again, to increase maneuverability. As we move up into the back of hand, again, the area between the thumb and fingers uh, is a little more shaped to match the hand. The flare has been increased a bit, getting it closer to the weapon, helping it engage with the weapon when getting hit. Uh, here's a good detail of the articulation slot for the thumb. And you can see that the thumb is a little deeper. The curvatures at the articulation is more pronounced like the uh, articulation plates for the back of hand. As we move into the back of the hand, you can see that again we have uh, more nice even curves, transition lines from the curves to the flats and from curve to curve. As we move into the other gauntlet, again you can see the curvature shapes of the thumb that's producing a deeper thumb, more articulation shaping, and as we move up to the top, this is a good detail of the changes we made in the third generation for attaching the fingertip plates to the glove itself. So instead of riveting all the way through to the glove, the very tip rivet, the tip plates were riveted onto the leather strap to start with, and then the leather was stitched onto the glove itself. This allows the pull to be brought all the way back to the first knuckle and makes for a smoother uh, pull when you're uh, using the gauntlet. Uh, since this is the first pair that you get to see the tip plates, uh, there are period examples of finger straps with tip plates like this. I don't think it was as common in the early 15th century as, from what I can tell, most of them tend to be more of the, the straps across the fingertips, but there are a few. One of the concerns that I had with the first generation gauntlet was when grabbing a weapon, that last fingernail space was potentially exposed to a, a hit. Uh, not that I had ever gotten hit there. There was just some concern about it. So when we moved into the second generation, we added the metal tip plates and we found that it was a much 
better uh, solution. So the third generation, we're, we're expanding on that. And as we move into the fourth generation, we'll probably continue to play with the, the small details. But uh, this is something that will move forward in the next generation. Well, working on the third pair, like we said, we started working on new patterns. By going back and looking at the originals, there were some design changes that just could only be accomplished through changing of the pattern. Now, in general, the design is rock solid, so the changes are pretty minor. What we will be looking at for those changes are uh, pretty small in nature. Unfortunately, while we were working on this, we just never completed the prototype while we were finishing up. So now it's been a few years and all of our thoughts are a little foggy and we'll probably have to start all over again when we go back to work on these again. But one of the other things that we were looking at is with the new design and the heat treating, we would be able to drop the thickness of some of the parts, which will probably pull another 100 grams off of the weight of the design. So we'll see when we do the next generation. Now, the first thing to remember with the fourth generation is this is still in prototype phase. So obviously the cuff, it's still in the works and the cuff hasn't been rolled yet. We're still playing with the cuff design. Again, we've changed the cone shape a little bit. Uh, reduce the front edge under the palm, I think even a little bit more than we did in the third generation. And we'll cover a little more of that as we get a little bit further in. Moving on up into the back of the hand, you can see here where we have um, shaped the space between the thumb and the fingers uh, more in line with the Avant uh, harness gauntlets. Uh, this engages the web of the hand and brings the metal down towards the weapon haft uh, much better. It uh, changes the lines a little bit. I, I like where it's going so far. The articulation plates, the general shaping, um, I'm pretty happy with the, the previous generations. Although we were finding that this middle plate was just a little bit too long and would create an air gap uh, from the tip plate for the fingers. So we shortened it a, a hair bit from the original Valerius pattern. That seems to work a little better for a, a medium, smaller size hand. We'll obviously uh, have to create multiple sizings for different size hands if we choose to, to do another production run. Um, instead of trying to create a one-size-fits-all design, we're being a little more focused to get it into a shape that uh, fits the hand a little better. Uh, we've changed the front edge of the gauntlet tip plate to be more in line with the uh, original, where it's rounded as opposed to the, the Valerius point. You can see here clearly where the back of the hand flares and how the, uh, or the cuff flares and the back of the hand nestles into that flaring. This is done like the original. Now, one of the big changes that we've chosen to work with is the the base of the, the palm. In the older versions, the the gauntlet doesn't wrap all the way around the, the back of hand. It, uh, it just goes down to the, the cuff. Whereas looking at the Avant gauntlet, this... Uh, produce this wraparound that came all the way around. And you can see the black dots where the holes are going to be to attach into the flare. This is how it appears to be done on the Avant Harness uh, gauntlet. And the wraparound seems to be thinned. Uh, so we're contemplating flaring this piece and grinding it so that it thins the more it gets to the edge and just sort of disappears into the edge, as you can see on the original. That's the direction that we're going with the fourth generation gauntlets. So, as you can see, over the years we have made small authorizations to the design as we learn more about armor making and the use of the gauntlets. While these changes don't look like much, they make a big performance difference. Can't wait to see the next generation, since going back to take a hard look at the originals, I think the fundamental functional improvements will be big, even though most people will not see much of a change. I plan to do another video soon about Bass and AI slots. My designs changed while working on those. 
drastically over the years. While it'll be more of a tech talk on how to improve the design of the eye slots, I think it will fall in line with the same as this, as alterations and design over time. What was your first piece of armor? Do you still have it? Comment below. Like and subscribe if you found this interesting. Here are a few more links that you might find interesting.